Jesus is today, right? Let's all stand and sing victory in Jesus. Praise God for him, right? Here we go. 44. I heard all those story how the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning. Then I
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I see some bright and some smiling faces this morning. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? Good. Good, good to see you. I know that uh, we've been blessed and we don't even realize it, right? right? What a beautiful day it is and the Lord's blessed us and we're able to come to the Lord's house and worship. Uh, something to mention is next week we go back to our regularly scheduled services. So Sunday school will start at 10, worship service will start at 11 to 12. Regular schedule or Sunday night, we'll start Sunday nights again next week. Again, that'll be the 5 o'clock service on Sunday night, so remember that. Uh, also, Wednesday night is, we've already opened that back up, so everything will be quote-unquote normal. <laughs> if there is such a word to be used any longer, again, we don't always want to be normal, especially with the definition of normal in today's world. But it's good to see you, I think, next week. I'm pretty sure that uh, the seniors uh, will have a luncheon after the service to honor the seniors that are graduating this year. I know everything has been kind of pushed to the side for this group of individuals, these young men and young, young women, and so we want to be sure that we are able to honor them. So if you're able to attend that, uh, we ask you please to do so. And we'll try to maintain our social distancing the best that we possibly can. But listen, just because we're social distancing does not mean we should be spiritually distanced. Amen? I think some people got that backwards there. <laughs> we don't want to be spiritual distance, and so we want to continue on. If you need a mask, we have those provided for you, gloves, and, and also soap, water, anything you may need, and hand sanitizer, and Clorox bleach wipes if you need those as well. So we have all those things here in place. If you feel uncomfortable, you're more than welcome to wear the mask. I promise you I won't ask you to wear the two in case the first one falls off. But anyway, I'm kidding. I'm kidding about that. <laughs> but we had a great time yesterday at First Monday. I'll share some numbers with you in the message today and some other things. You know, it's always a, if a pastor ever needed a little bit of ammo, if you would like to call it that, or, or information to put in your sermon, go down and work first Monday a little while. You'll get all you ever needed, right? But anyway, uh, we had a good time there. I appreciate, uh, I really, truly do, and I'm not going to try to mention all the names because I'll miss somebody and I'll mess this up, but I do appreciate those that came and worked first Monday. Uh, some were there an hour or two, some were there all day. Every minute was appreciated. And if you are able and you want to do that and only spend an hour, hour and a half, let me tell you, it's fulfilling. I know you may think to yourself that that's just not my cup of tea going up and seeing people and talking to strangers and this, that, and other. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will embolden you and give you the courage and give you the words that you need. And it may take you a few minutes to get your feet underneath you. But let me tell you something. God will lead you in the direction he'll have you to go. You may be the one person, the one Jesus that that people has never seen before in their life. Meaning that you may be see Jesus through you and knowing that you sacrificed your time to go down there and serve the Lord in giving out his word. And that word, God's word, never goes back what? It never, goes, it never goes, goes away and comes back void, meaning that God will bless that. And uh, God blessed us tremendously yesterday in many different ways. And so I'm always excited to share that with you because it it's, it's an outreach. It's a, it's a missionary thing. It's a, a mission within our own community, within our own town, within our own uh, County, so just uh, if you can do that, if you, that's fine. If you can't, I know you serve in other ways, and I know I don't want to go on and on and drag this out. But there's many that serve in other ways. They put stickers on on envelopes and on the back of the Bibles and get it all ready for us to go and have the trailers loaded and donate monies and all these things to go toward that. There's a lot of working parts to it, that, and a lot of people involved in in that ministry that you may not ever know about. I just want to shout out to the young ones that came yesterday. And I will mention their names, Michael, Kane, Norton, Jackson Norton, Brooklyn Norton Kane, and Gage Fortner Kane. And it's good to see four little children running around handing out Bibles and sacks to other children that are down there. Let me tell you something, that puts a smile on the pastor's face. And that puts a smile on my face because I know their parents are teaching them to serve the Lord. What a blessing it is because you want to turn around and look at the next generation coming up and see that they're serving the Lord and that they're learning something. It is just an awesome thing. And for those adults over there, they're setting an example for them children to follow. So I thank God for that. I thank God for a Walnut Springs Bible Baptist Church. 
because you are putting the Bible in there as well as putting God's Word out there. It does help. <coughs> Let's stand one more time to 196. I almost had it wrong. 166. Heavenly sunlight. <clears throat> Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep veil. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart grow 
Ago, Brother Tim asked how long had Miss Betty and Brother Kenneth been here in the church. And I just knew Brother Kenneth was going to go, oh, about 30 minutes. <laughs> he left so I could say that. <laughs> it's good to see y'all in the house. It is. Everybody needs to put a smile on their face, right? It's a great day. It's a beautiful day out there. We're in the Lord's house. We're where we're supposed to be. Right. Amen? Amen? Put a smile on your face. This is where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be in the Lord's house, and, and we, I hope that we receive a blessing from God's Word. And don't listen to the preacher. Listen to what God has to say. Amen? Amen. Right. I'd like to mention that Brother Anthony Brooks will be going off for uh, 
his annual checkup. So remember him uh, as he flies up there. Uh, I can't even think of the place, but anyway, he, he goes once a year and all that. What's his name? Rochester. 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 Hopefully things will be settled down there and he'll be able to get his test and everything done. My mother will be having surgery on her back Thursday. So remember her and dad as they go through that together. And I know there's many others on our prayer list. Vicky. Yes, Miss Vicki Wilson. Uh, remember Dale? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> remember, remember the owners. Miss Vicky's going to have some surgery uh, this week as well. So all this will be this week coming up. So remember that. And also remember to spread the word that we go back to our regular services next week. That we can all come back together. I know some of us. I say us, and I, I should say some people have gotten used to the split services and all that. And, and I know some like the early part and some like the second half of it and this, that, and other. But let me tell you, if you like it that much, we need to grow the church where we have to do that, okay? <laughs> but until that time, I want us all to be together, and I want us all to grow together, and I want everybody to come back that was here previously and come back and worship and serve the Lord, uh, serve, serve the Lord. And it's also good to see visitors that we have in our, our crowd today, and that's great. We thank you for being here, and you're most welcome. But what a blessed day it is, and I, I pray that the Lord would lead you and guide you throughout this service. Today I'll be preaching out of Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and verses 5 through 7. And I have several other verses that I'm going to use today as the Lord has laid this upon my heart. Uh, because of the time that we're in and the place that we're at in our community and in our nation. Again, it's a blessing to see you in the house of the Lord. I'm going to start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you again today, Lord. And Lord, you know my heart. Lord, I know you can see through all the heaviness that's there, Lord, through the, the stress that's there, Lord, and Lord, to the time that we live in. But Lord, I pray that you would just burden all of our hearts, Lord. And Lord, that we would see where our nation is at. Lord, that we would see the wickedness that is running rampant within our land. Lord, that you would just open our hearts up, Lord, that we would have the heart of forgiveness, but also, Lord, we would know within ourselves, Lord, that time is short. Lord, I know that many has heard the messages over and over and over again, Lord, but it doesn't change the fact that time is short. And Lord, I pray that if there be a lost soul here today, that today they would quit putting that off. And Lord, today that they would ask for Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, and that they would receive. Lord, we pray for the many that we had contact with yesterday. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would burden their hearts. I pray that they would open up the Bibles that they received. And Lord, that they would read them, Lord. Lord, I pray that they would read the, the Roman road that was given to them, Lord, in a Bible marker, Lord. And I pray that your word would go out to those that are lost, and Lord, that they would be saved, Lord. Lord, we don't have to know the numbers that were saved, Lord. The important thing is that they were saved in the Lord that you know, Lord, and that, that we'll get to see them in heaven with you, Lord, as we live for an eternity. Lord, I pray that you would burden our hearts, open our hearts, Lord, that we would see the need to bring those that are lost to you, Lord, to lead those that are lost to you, Lord. And Lord, I pray for those that are running rampant in the streets today. Pray for those police officers that are defending themselves, defending properties, and Lord, that are, that are just defending their, their town and their, their city, Lord. But I pray that you would be with them and protect them, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would just send your Holy Spirit that it would cover each and every one, Lord. And Lord, that they would just stop to think, what are we doing? Lord, I do thank you for the ones that are here today. Lord, those that are serving you. Lord, those that are following your direction and your will, Lord. And Lord, I pray that when the second coming comes, Lord, which I know is soon and is close, Lord, that you'll find us still praising and worshiping you, Lord, and giving you honor and glory. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to stand in this pulpit and deliver your message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. The title of the message today is not really fitting, but it gives an inclination of where I'm going today, and I call it Sons of Perdition. Now, that's not necessarily what I'm preaching on, but I use that as a reference into the time that we're living in and to the things that are happening within our country at this very moment. It's a sad day when we have 
people that are righteous, that are breaking windows, stealing, and doing all those things. But also, as I will mention again, a tragic event of what started at some of it. Now listen, if you're looking for an excuse, you can find an excuse to do what you want to do. Right. If you want to go to church, you'll go to church. If you won't have to be out of church, you'll find an excuse to get out of church. You can find someone that said this or someone that said that or an excuse to say, well, this happened or that happened, so I'm just not going anymore. Excuses, there's many out there to be found, but it does not justify the action. It does not justify. I look back at Jesus Christ as he died on the cross. Not only for you and I, but for these that are living, these that are taking this wickedness, as I'm going to call it, these acts upon themselves, but he died for them also. Amen. So therefore, I pray for them that through the Holy Spirit, because we don't give the Holy Spirit the credit he deserves. I pray that the Holy Spirit would burden the hearts that they would see what they're doing, that this is not right in any shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. It's not right. Two wrongs don't make it right. Yeah. It's common sense that seems to have left us in the time and the day that we live in, and it's turned into anarchy. I look here in Genesis chapter 6, and I read verses 5 through 7, which resonated through my mind yesterday as we were through First Monday. You see, the message, in it, and I say this, not being more important, not being anything different than any other Christian, is the message resonated through my mind day, all day of what God had me to speak about today. My heart was burdened thinking about the Hundreds that passed by that were lost and doomed to eternity in hell. I've even stopped people, and I'm surprised that I asked my wife this this morning. I said, I wonder how many complaints that they've received about how forward that I am. I can only speak for myself at first Monday. Because I've stopped some people, and I've actually said to them as they've come by two or three times, listen, one day, it may be brought back to you, and I say it in a different way, but, but listen, one day it may be brought to you that a man tried to help you. Basically, I tried to help you with the Word of God and tried to give you the Word of God, but you rejected it two or three times. That's going to come back at some point in time unless you turn to Jesus Christ. Yeah. You see, that burns within me. It hurts me deep within the inside, knowing that they have an opportunity to at a minimal, at a minimum, accept the Word of God. It's in the book form. You can open it. You can read it. It's your decision whether you do. I often wonder how many carry them and put them on the shelf, put them in a glove box, throw them in the back seat, put them in the trunk, and think, well, I will get to that later. Listen, you may not get later. You may not have an opportunity to go back and read that later. The time is now. God's people, and I say this to this church and to those that are listening, if you're a, a true Christian, God's people need to open their eyes and their hearts up as well and see time is short. It's time for us to get after it. It's time for us to get done, to get it done. It's time for us to have a sense of urgency. God has given us sign after sign after sign, but yet we've got the blinders on. Brother and sister, it's time. It's time to take off the kid gloves. It's time to speak it forward, be forward with our speaking, to be honest with our speaking. It's time for us to Lay it out there the way that it is. Take the sugar off of it and tell it, tell the truth for what's going to happen. It breaks my heart as I see the hundreds walk by. And I wonder how many are doomed to an eternity in hell. In Genesis 6, starting in verse 5, 
God's word says. I didn't say this. I didn't make this up. It wasn't a book that I read. It wasn't this, that, or the other that I found, or an analogy, or somebody that had some uh, wrote a theological book, or so forth and so on. God's word said. Let that penetrate. Let that burn in for a second. This is what God's word said. This is a warning to God's people. And I don't want to hear all, here the preacher goes again, on the Old Testament. <laughs> well, listen, I got some New Testament for you, too, because I'm going to tie all this together that the Holy Spirit allows. It says in verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. God saw it. It's not that he ignored it. It's not that he didn't know what's going on. God saw it, just as he does today. And he said that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. You see what God's telling us here? He said, look, I see this. I understand this. And this is not something that is just for a short time. This is something that's ongoing. And it repented. I think the Lord sometimes is sad for making man. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. God looked down on this earth, and what did he see? People that were wicked. And every imagination of their hearts was only evil, again, as I said, continually. What a mess. As I mentioned before, we've got rioting, protesting, destruction going on in our country today. There's nothing wrong with protesting. But how does protesting turn into throwing bricks and rocks through windows, stealing TVs, <laughs> of all things, breaking into liquor stores, destroying property, burning down buildings? That's not protesting. That's anarchy. That's wickedness. Let me tell you, the same God sees it today. And I look and I think about this scripture and listen. It makes me want to break down in tears. It truly does. I hold them back today. I look at that and I see the wickedness that was going on at the time of Noah. I look back in the beginning how men were and how men were acting and the things that they were doing and the way that they, they had uh, fallen away from God. I look at these things and then I, I take a comparison, a snapshot. A lot of you young people know what that is. And you take a snapshot on your phone and you can save it. You take a snapshot of Genesis there and you compare it to today. And guess what? It's the same picture. It's the same thing. God looks down and he sees the wickedness running rampant. He sees the imagination of man that's going on continually. God is not going to let it continue. So I said, I've heard that my entire life. You may, but let me tell you something. You're one day closer today than you were yesterday. You're one minute closer now than you were a minute ago. Let me tell you something. God always keeps his word. It's going to happen. There is no doubt. No doubt. Jesus said, and you've heard me say this many times, as it was, in the days of Noah, so shall it also in the days of the Son of Man. He said, you're going to see the same thing in the days of Noah as you're going to see the same day from the returning of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. We pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You better be getting ready. You better put your shoes on. Not that you're going to need them. <laughs> but you better put your shoes on because it's right around the corner. I watched a young man on TV who was interviewed. In the background, there's a burning car. Some of you may have seen the same thing. I don't know. I flipped and I watched a few channels. And Again, I don't believe everything I see. But I watched him and they were interviewing him. He's roughly 16 years old. 
they asked him, he says, what do you think about this? Well, he went on and on about the injustices that had been done, and, and he went on about how he was trying to justify the actions that he had taken and being a part of that. You see, a lot of times we forget that we're guilty by association. <laughs> we forget that if we're out there in that crowd, maybe you're not throwing a rock, maybe you're not setting a car on fire, but you're out there in it, you're guilty by association. It's just like sin. You're guilty of the wickedness if you're going to live in it. Right. Young man doesn't have a clue. See, my heart goes out to him. I don't, it doesn't mean this young man was a bad young man. It doesn't mean this young man was a horrible person. That's not what I am saying. What I'm saying is he was deceived in believing that this was the right thing to do. God's word says in a second, Timothy, no, second theologian. He says, let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man, and I'm gonna, I want to focus on that part right there. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now he's talking about the Antichrist is what it's referring to here. He's talking about the son of perdition is what he's talking about. And I'll read the rest of the scripture for you in a moment. But I want to focus here for a moment on let no man deceive you by any means. Meaning that even as Christians, we can get duped into, we can get drawn into something, and we don't even realize what's going on until it's too late. He says, For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. No one wants to talk about the falling away. It's happening. It was happening way before the coronavirus came. We'll be hard pressed. And I'm just giving you a reality get the church back on track after this is said and done. I believe through God's grace, through the Holy Spirit, and a lot of elbow grease, it can be done. Amen? Amen. Amen. But it's going to take a church to do it. It says, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. We're speaking here, we're talking about in the end times, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, these young people that are out there rioting, these young people that are out there doing these things, and let me tell you something, they're of all races. It's not just one race, so let's not even go there. Different age groups, it's diverse, but they're going to be led like sheep to the slaughter by the Antichrist because they're going to fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. It hurts me. Falling away, the groom's a great falling away. People are rejecting God's word and God's way. They've been deceived by Satan himself. Satan is having a playground. The United States of America right now, and I'm going to say this, it's going to be offensive. I intend it to be so. It's the devil's playground. He is having the time of his life. The only other time that he thought that he was, that the only other best time that he had is when Jesus was on the cross dying and he thought he had won the battle. But guess what? <laughs> Surprise, he did not. And he's not going to win this one either. But it's the devil's playground. God's people have got to step up and get down on their knees and start praying for redemption. We see you're being set up for lawlessness. Think about that. You see, back in Noah's day, every man did according to what he thought was right in his own eyes. Basically, whatever I wanted to do, you can justify whatever you want to do. Like I said, we've got excuses. We've got this, that, and you can justify whatever you want to do. Right now, the church is needed more than ever before. God's word is needed more than ever before. God is needed... Always as before, but God has needed more than ever before. I had a person, a young man, a person, money. <laughs> Again, I love it. It's hard work. We're on our feet from, you know, I get there about 8, 8.30 from till whatever time we run out of usually water or, or Bibles or whatever may be the case. I love it when we run out of Bibles. But I had a young man tell me, he said, I'm an atheist. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
You say, why would you laugh at that? Hang on a minute. I'd asked him if he wanted a Bible, and uh, uh, his friend had stepped up and said, yeah, I want a Bible, so I gave him a Bible. And uh, uh, matter of fact, three of the, there were about five of them, three of the five took a Bible. And the friend said, well, he don't want one. He's an atheist. And, and immediately, when he pointed to him, my eyes were fixed on him, right? Because that is like throwing a, a lure out in front of a large mouth bass. I'm going to jump all over that, <laughs> right? I want that. And so I looked at the young man, and I, I, and I looked at him, and I said, I don't believe you. <laughs> now listen, you probably didn't expect that from a stranger first Monday, but I don't. I don't believe you. Brother Corey was there. I don't believe you. If you say that you're an atheist, I'm like, I don't believe you. I don't believe there's such a thing. Oh, Pastor, you've, you've lost your mind. Yeah, I, I took it out and played with it a little while. I lost it. Yeah, maybe so. But let me tell you something. I don't believe that because I know that they know that there's a higher being. Satan knows it. The demons know it. Everybody knows it. And to say I'm an atheist is one of those excuses. Well, I just don't want to talk about this, that, and So I gave his friends the Bible. I said, y'all better talk to that boy. But the look on his face when I said what I said, he had no response. Because he knew I was right. Let me tell you something, brother. I don't believe, and I may get 50 dislikes on the message or on the internet. I don't care. I don't. Don't look at it. I don't care. Because I don't believe you. You know better. There is a God. And God is real. I exhort you, I encourage you to acknowledge that and get right with God before it's too late. I think to myself, let no man deceive you. Don't be deceived. As I said, many are being deceived. It breaks my heart. There's only hope to the word of God and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. The problem is, will people really listen? You see, something else back in Noah's day. I use these words intentionally. The poor old Noah preached for 120 years. Noah preached for 120 years. 120 years he preached. Not one soul was saved. Let me tell you something. It's hard for me as your pastor to preach from Sunday to Sunday to Sunday in the altar in you. Not always. But no one gets saved. It ain't easy. I think about no one. I think about his resolve to God. I think about his dedication that he had that he kept on preaching. Let me tell you something. Keep on preaching. Keep on teaching. Don't give up. I wonder a lot of times, you know, are the people listening, are they taking the word of God, as I before said, and, and, and are they going to read it? Are they going to adhere to it? Are they going to read the Roman road? Are they going to realize something's wrong, something's missing, something they've been looking at? I've told many of people, they're going down to first Monday, this would be the best gift you've ever received at first Monday. And it's free. <laughs> it's amazing, though, how our society don't truly know the word free. We hand the Bible down. So it's, well, how much is it? I said, it's free. No, really, how much is it? <laughs> it's free. Really, no, but really, how much, how much is the Bible? It's, it's free. And this can't comprehend that it's free. Let me tell you something. The price has been paid for salvation, <laughs> and it's free also. Amen. If you think the Bible blows your mind, wait till you see what Jesus Christ did for you. He paid the price for your sin, your actions, your wickedness, so you could have something called salvation again, yeah. which is free. The first Monday team of volunteers gave an astounding amount of water out Saturday, around 890 bottles of water. Now, if you think that number's staggering, that's just the ones who accepted the gift. Okay? We gave out a conservative estimate of 500 to 550 miles. 
that was from 8.30 in the morning to 4 p.m. I honestly don't think within our country that there's any other place that you could go to do this. God has blessed us with an opportunity to serve him in a unique way. Call it a niche if you'd like to, but in a unique way, he's given this church, Little Walnut Springs Bible Baptist Church, an opportunity to serve him greatly, and I thank you for doing so. Some declined both water and Bibles, but they had an opportunity. <laughs> One man looked at me and barked at me like a dog. I don't know what's going on with him, but so be it. You know, uh, good luck with that. Right? There's always going to be one. You know what? That did not stop me from handing the Bible out to the next people that came by. I know he was acting silly, but being disrespectful. But let me tell you something. I hope he's right with the Lord. My point is that if we want to work for God, we have opportunities. You hear me say time and time again that the clock is ticking and we're running out of time. But God's word says, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh-oh. Covetousness, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and what? Unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good. We see that today. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. He says, from such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laid with sin, led away with divers lusts. It's a warning. When you see these things, start looking to the east. This just described the day and the time that we live in. To the T. You don't think God's word is real? You can't make that up. You can't dream this up. In your wildest imagination, you can't put that on paper. But God did for us to see and give us a warning. Ever learning this part right here? I have many conversations on this, but ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth is right here in God's Word. Church, I thank you for the stand that you take on the King James Version Bible. Amen. It's not a popular thing in the world. But let me tell you this. Let me give you a shot in the arm. Let me, let me give you something here that will maybe bring your spirits up a little bit. A lot of people will say that, and they say, what version did I say? King James Version. They say, awesome. You see, because God's Word's got watered down, and some people, not all, are tired of it. They're tired of it being watered. I had a man ask me, he said, why, Pastor, do you use the King James Version? And I said, because I believe it's the truest form of the Word of God. Period. Amen. If I had the Dead Sea Scrolls that could read them, I would read them. But I believe this is it. This is the truest Word of God. This is it. It's not watered down. Well, it's got these and now in there. It's supposed to be in there. If it says, therefore, start looking why. If it says, but, pay attention. but yet ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Well, I can't understand it. That's just an excuse. Right? You can work a cell phone <laughs> and do everything in the world with a cell phone, but you can't understand the these and the thous. That's not going to fly. That plane's going to crash. I look at these scriptures, and I think to myself, world, how much more confirmation do you need? The scripture tells us. It shows us what will happen. We see this very thing in what we call real time. 
You know, we do the FaceTime on, on the boogie, or not Facebook, but FaceTime on your phone, and you can see things in real time. We're looking at things in real time. We're seeing it happen right before our eyes. We're seeing the Word of God being fulfilled with every letter, every T that's crossed, every I that's dotted. Everything is falling into place perfectly, but yet we're ever learning, and we can't see it because Satan has got the blinders on us. I shouldn't be surprised, but I spoke with several men that had questions about this area and others. I believe it's an honor to be able to do so. But also, it's depressing. People are confused. Who's the author of confusion? He's doing his job. They have taken a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and they mixed it all together and now all of a sudden they're religious. <laughs> it blows my mind with some of the analogies that they came up with. I had one man tell me, he says, <sighs> shaking his head, <laughs> which was telling him, he said, well, I'm one of them Catholics. What are you shaking your head for? <laughs> I tell you, Baptist, I'm going to look you in the eye. Because I'm standing strong on the promises of God. Amen. If you're shaking your head, you're not. <laughs> they believe to be a Christian, but they're not saved. You hear what I'm saying here? They believe to be a Christian, but they're not saved. Because they haven't asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. I read something. The essence of false religion is a person being involved in a religious activity while being void of spiritual intimacy. It is exemplified by a person having a ritual of religion without a relationship with God. If you're not a Christian, unless you ask Jesus and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Many believe, and they, will, they believe they will look you in the eye and they will tell you they believe as long as they're doing good, as long as they've done some great act in their life, as long as they're doing something in what they would consider to be perfect, that they're good to go. You're not good to go. It's a lie straight from the depths of hell. Quit believing that stuff and being led astray. This young man that was interviewed, he thought he's out there doing good. But he's involved in wickedness. We look and it's warned in the Bible that works ain't going to get you there. At least any man should do what? Boast. A man walked into a Hobby Lobby. And he saw a bowl of fruit there. It was set up for the guest. He, seeing the bowl of fruit there, decided to grab an apple. He bit into it only to discover that it wasn't real. <laughs> uh, it was wax. He was quite embarrassed, I would imagine. He thought it was real, and now he doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> you get my point here where we're leading? He thought it was real. He's done partaking of it. Now he realizes, what do I do with it? He thought, do I put it back with my teeth marks in it? He thought, do, do, I, do I steal it and take it with me? What do I do with it now? Because now it's in my hand. Now I can't get rid of it. You see, that's what people feel like with false religion, is they bite into it. At some point in time, they realize it ain't real, but now what do I do with it? Because I'm holding on to it when I need to throw it away. Amen. He had mistaken something artificial for something that was real. You feel me? My point is, it's possible to have an artificial church, believe it or not. It looks real. It's possible to have an artificial Christian but to look real. If you don't have Jesus 
Christ your Lord and Savior, you are not a Christian. Amen. Preacher, I can't believe you said that. That is offensive. I didn't say that. God did. Jesus did. You want to argue with somebody? Argue with God. <laughs> Ask Jonah how that works out. Amen. You can't argue with God. You can't argue with Jesus. God said it. Jesus said it. Don't be led astray. Don't be pulled into something false. If you don't have a true relationship with Jesus, acknowledge that today. If you're holding on to an emotion, if you're holding on to uh, some preacher stood in front of you, and let me tell you this, this really gets under my skin, okay? <laughs> some preacher said in there, if you want to be saved, raise your hand. I don't play that game. Okay, by the profession of your faith, you've been saved. No. No, unless you ask. The Bible says specifically that you've got to confess of what? Your mouth. You've got to do what? Believe where? In your heart. You've got to confess. You can't just raise your hand. That's not confession. That wasn't confession with your mouth. You just raise your hand. You've acknowledged something, all right, that I'm lost. Okay, now let's go further. Let's finish this. You acknowledge it. You ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. If the Holy Spirit has burdened you, the Holy Spirit has let you know that that's wrong, and you come and you pray, and you ask Jesus in your heart, you acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you're going to die, and that you're going to be doomed to an eternity in hell, Jesus will come to your heart and he will save you. Only then will you be saved, and only then do you and God know the difference. Amen. But to throw your hand up and say, oh, well, okay, yeah, I acknowledge it. And the preacher to say you're saved, whew. I don't want that blood on my hands. Hold on to something that's real. Something that's real. Many believe in a false sense of security, Brother Kim. But what I'm asking you to do today is believe in something real. Jesus Christ. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. Your time is short. God's word has shown us that you put your faith in Jesus and you'll have an eternal, eternal life with him. Amen. I ask you today, put your faith in Jesus Christ and in Jesus only before it's too late as we stand. 99, 99. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, And life is for